Thank you. We now welcome our third place finisher in today's Hollywood Casino 400 here at Kansas Speedway, Jeff Gordon, driver of the number 24 Ex Exalta Chevrolet, currently fourth in points, only 32 points now behind Matt Kenseth. Jeff, talk a little bit about your run out there today here. Yeah, it was a, it was a great day, uh, obviously a great finish for us. Um, you know, we, uh, we, we had a, a, I, what I thought a tire issue early in the race, and I made a big mistake. By, the car got real, real tight on me, and, and I came down pit road and prob probably jumped the gun and was, should have waited maybe a lap or two uh, longer because we got caught under the caution uh, after we made that stop. So we were playing you know, catch up the rest of the day. We had a, uh, the nice thing was I knew we had a good race car. Um, you know, we, we came in and we had four tires in the back and, and drove all the way up to, I think, around 10th or possibly better. And so I knew we had a good race car. That gave me confidence. And um, you know, then, then it was just all about trying to get the strategy right. And I actually made another mistake because I thought they said, to, if nobody comes in, come in. So I came in when nobody else came in. And he meant, he, no, he actually said, if everybody comes in, come in. <laughs> so uh, I got lucky. Uh, we got lucky. Uh, that one actually worked in our favor because we got four tires and fuel, and then we we're able to just come in and put two tires there at the end and, and come out uh, in what second or third. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was a good day for us. Um, you know, car was good, uh, and, and you know, finished third. Man, we're happy with that. Okay, we'll take questions for Jeff. Please raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you. Okay, we'll take one here in the middle, then come up front to stand. Brett Lamb, Speedway Digest. How did you like the right front tire used in today's race? And would you like to see it ramp more tracks next season where a lot of issues occur with that? Well, you got to understand, you know, every track is different and every surface is different. And so, you know, um, the, the biggest thing that, that I have going on right now with, with repaves is, is talking to the companies that, that pave these racetracks um, and talking to them about looking at the surface. I, it's not a Goodyear issue. Goodyear's doing the best they can. They got, they got a tough job. Um, these surfaces are too smooth. Um, and and I, I, we don't want bumps. I'm not talking about bumps. I'm talking about the abrasiveness mm -hmm. of, of the racetrack. It doesn't dissipate heat, doesn't wear the tires, and all it does is cause friction and heat and failures. And then Goodyear has to build a very hard, durable tire. I applaud their effort for trying to do this uh, dual tread zone, whatever you want to call it. Um, I mean, for me, I, I, it, the, tr the issues weren't as treacherous for me, um, you know, the grip level wasn't as good as I would like it to be, and the fall off wasn't as much as I'd like it to be. But uh, it's some guys that that seem to set their car below freer had bigger issues uh, on the restarts than what we did. Our car's a little tighter, and so my car actually would take off halfway decent on, on restart. It didn't get up to speed good, but it was at least comfortable. So, you know, to me, it's really the surface. We're paving these racetracks with what we're paving new highways with. This is not a highway. This is a racetrack, and and it's a race car and a racing tire. It needs to be uh, looked at differently. And we have the same issue in Phoenix. Um, every every re Darlington. We've had the same issue. Every repave that we've had over the last six seven years. Okay, we'll take our next question up front from Stan. Then we'll go to the press box. Jeff Stan Creekmore with RPMTonight.com. And I'll say this carefully. You always do, Stan. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm listening. Over the course of the year, you look to have become the driver you were again back in the 19, early 1990s. It's like you're far more enthusiastic than you've been over the last couple of years. And, and today's effort seemed amazing as well. Are you feeling more confident with, with each race this year? Oh, yeah. Um, it's not this year, though. Earlier this year, I was probably as frustrated as I've ever been in a race car. We, uh, we, we just were missing something. And, and then the times when we hit on it, like Texas, for instance, and we had a failure at the left front hub. And you know, we, 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 we've had a, a tough year. I mean, last year was, was tough enough. And, and then this year, uh, it, I, thought, I thought that you know, we'd gotten all that out of our system and we s didn't seem to have. But I tell you what, we never stopped working and, and trying to get the cars uh, to, to suit my liking. And when the cars, you know, are, are solid and giving me good feedback and I can get aggressive with it, 
then, then my confidence goes up. And, and right now, my team's been bringing great race cars to the racetrack, uh, not just in the chase, but about three, four races, I think, prior to that. We just really started making some gains on some things. And, um, and it's shown up week in and week out. And, and you know, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun right now. So the confidence and, and how you feel about it is all in the performance of the car, you know. Um, and, and it's a team effort. You know, I, I feel like I'm as responsible for that as anybody else on the team. Uh, and and I, I take it hard just like everybody else on the team. So uh, I'm just proud of how we fought through a lot of the things that we've gone through this year. And now when it matters most, you know, we're, we're making the best of it. All right, we'll go to the press box for a question. Nate Ryan, uh, USA Day Sports. Uh, Jeff, wanted to get you to follow up kind of on what uh, Kurt's assessment of, of the race was about how uh, he, he felt like it was too treacherous and that if there was more grip and more side-by-side -side racing, that produces a better show. Are, are, do you kind of assess the quality of today's race the same way, or, or is there any sort of silver lining where 15, a record 15 caution flags can produce all this adversity. I mean, virtually everybody in the top 10 had to overcome something to get a good finish. Can that still be compelling, I guess, for fans? Or do you think like it has to have that side-by-side -side stuff that, that Kurt was talking about? Uh, I, I find every race compelling. You know, I, I do. You know, when you're sitting in the seat where I'm sitting, uh, uh, there's so many challenges that, that you're faced with. And, and you know, there's, there's pit strategy, there's pit stops, there's fuel, there's, um, you know, trying to make your car better. There's, you know, restarts where you're on the edge, the car's sliding around, and, and you're trying to make it stick. And, and, you know, I wouldn't say that these are the kind of conditions that I prefer. Um, because it's hard to really feel the car and, and you are on that, that razor's edge. Uh, and I think, you know, if we had, uh, as I mentioned, a little bit more abrasive racetrack and, and a tire that, that suited that, I think that we'd see the groove widen out and have a little bit more side-by-side -side racing like we used to see uh, here at Kansas. But at the same time, you might not see as many cautions. So, uh, you know, sometimes side-by-side -side racing in multiple grooves doesn't always mean you're going to have the most exciting race. Uh, and, and to me, I think these days we all know cautions uh, make for much more exciting racing, and we certainly have plenty of those today. Okay, we'll come back down to the media center. We have a question right here in the middle. Nick Bromberg, Yahoo Sports. Jeff, did you find yourself at all looking behind going, okay, where's Matt Kenseth? What's the points now when you realized he was not one of the drivers you were chasing now in the chase? Um, I knew that, that Kevin Harvick and I were tied going in and he was running ahead of me. <laughs> I knew that. Um, you know, you, you're just really pushing to get all that you can get. I mean, we were in second and, and I felt like our, our car was a little bit better on the long runs and I was really hoping to go green all the way there to the end. Um, and I was hoping that, that maybe Kevin wore his, his right front tire out like, like he did earlier in, in the race. And that was kind of the only sort of strategy that I had as a driver is, is you know, try not to push mine too hard and, and see if that would work out. And it didn't. I mean, he, he was fast all the way to the end. The caution came out. We fell back to third. And then we were battling with, with Kurt. So um, I don't even know where we're at in points right now, I'll be honest. Uh, I know that was a good day for us. That's, that's all I do know. Any additional questions? We'll take one in the back, Scott, up on top, and then come back up to Stan. Jeff, I guess you guys are okay, but could you take us through that sequence of events with you and Kirk? And another follow-up question. Can you tell me what percentage you guys were running throughout the race up till that last 20? Was it 80 percent, 75? There's only one way, and that's 100 percent. I don't know any other way. Um, Let's see. I think that uh, first of all, with with Curly, I mean, it was really just hard racing, and and you know, I th I was fine with all of it up until he drove into my door on the back straightaway. You know, there was just no reason for that, uh, and and these cars are so aerodynamically sensitive these days. Every little thing like that makes a difference. And my when he did that, my car all of a sudden just started pushing really, really bad. And luckily, we got to fix it on, on the next couple of pit stops. And I just wanted to let him know my side of what I saw, you know, and, and hear his side as well. I, I wasn't trying to get in a fight or anything, uh, but we kind of agreed to disagree. And, and Kurt and I get along fine. Uh, and I just wanted him to know that, you know, have a better reason than that to run into the side of my car. 
Okay, I think we have one up front with Stan. You're not worried, are you? Charlotte. Worried about you, Stan? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Charlotte, mile and a half. Kansas today, mile and a half. How different, though, is the challenge going to be next week versus this week? Well, I mean, the, to me, this is the track that one of the tracks I was, uh, you know, really worried about. Um, the, you know, and again, it's the repave. You know, when, when, when they repaved this track, it just didn't suit my style, and we really struggled. And, um, you know, I mean, I spun out qualifying here, you know, so. To, to come out of here with a, a third place finish, boy, I'm excited because we ran really good at Charlotte uh, earlier this year. And I think our mile and a half program has uh, gotten so much better since then. So, you know, the big challenge is qualifying. We've got we to gotta qualify strong at Charlotte. Uh, and, and I know we're going to race good there. So I, I'm looking forward to next week. Final questions for Jeff? Jeff, you are fourth in point standings, 32 points back from Matt. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Good congratulations on your run today.